Hey, today we're gonna to talk about Lightroom. Just the quick and dirty tips. So what do you do right after you take the nature photography pictures outside and bring them in and stick them on your computer? What are the first things you do just to quickly process your photos? We'll talk about nature photography and white box processing. So if that's something you're interested in, you can like and subscribe and you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. We're also trying out a little bit of new lighting today, the Peter McKinnon style. So if you don't know who Peter McKinnon is, you should follow him on YouTube. He's a really great photographer and does, is, he's very charismatic. He's fun to watch. But today uh, it's uh, diffused lighting right by my face, right behind my hand here is a giant light at 11 o'clock. So let us know how you feel about the lighting here. It's kind of dramatic, kind of digging it. We also do macro photography workshops called Bugshot every year. We do one in the U.S. and then one internationally somewhere throughout the world. And we always talk about Lightroom at those workshops. And the topic quickly roller coasters into something uh, very in-depth. And people often walk away thinking, oh, I just need some quick tips. What do I do after I stick my card in my computer? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about processing nature photography photos and also white box photos. So we'll get into both of those and it won't take much time. This is Lightroom. Um, this is the icon for Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now there is a difference between the regular Adobe Lightroom and the Adobe Lightroom Classic. I am using Classic. It, it um, seems to have uh, all of the options for Lightroom versus I feel like the other one is sort of a watered down version and um, it, for me it's very frustrating to use. So I would recommend using the Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom Classic version. And so these are the two images that we're going to work with today, but I thought I would just show you how you would import images. So you would take your SD card and um, plug it in, either stick it in the side of your computer, Macs have a slot for an SD card, or you just use some sort of um, device to allow you to import um, images from your SD card to your computer. And once you do that, you just go down here to the bottom left and you click import. And on the left here, it'll say, where do you want to import these files from? And I'm just going to click this. This is, I just, um, taught a course uh, to my students and these are just some stacked images um, and they were learning how to stack photo stack and so here um, you can either check all of these images and import them or um, down here you could say uncheck all and let's say I just wanted this last image here um, just depending on what you wanted like maybe you forgot to format your card and you don't want to re-import all of those images in that's that's what you would do so um, typically though you would uh, check all of these images and then just click import now I'm not going to do that right now because that'll take a while for them to import in and I want to get right to editing okay so once they're imported in they will show up in this all photographs file folder here and um, uh, as well as in uh, previously imported. So you'll have um, you know, various places where you can find them. But now the first thing um, that I do when, I, uh, when we import is, um, let's go, so this is a, a short wing Katie did from South Texas. Um, so you can go in to develop and um, the tab right here at the top and then um, just click uh, what would be super simple is to just click this auto button here Lightroom has presets and it looks at your image and it will automatically adjust your image for you now you can see the exposure contrast highlights shadow whites blacks all of that moved let me undo it just command Z will undo in Lightroom and I can Click it again. I'll click auto and it would, it's going to, Lightroom is going to uh, adjust the image for me. Now it does a really good job and sometimes that's all I'll do and just be done with it because um, I agree with Lightroom. That is good. But I'm just going to run through each one of these development controls down here and just show you what they do so that you can with, with your eye um, 
adjust how you think the image looks best. And that to that point, this is very personal. Um, what looks good to me may not look good to you, may not look good to your neighbor. Um, so just do what looks good to you. That's the best bet. So um, you can adjust the temperature. So you can see you can make it much cooler, warmer. Um, I usually just sort of toggle it back and forth, see where I like it. Same thing with tint. You can give it different tints. Um, and exposure. So if you under or overexpose your image, you can pull some of that back. So you can see if you get it too dark, too light, right? So you can just sort of see where you like the exposure. I actually think I did a pretty good job exposing this little critter. Uh, contrast, so pulling contrast down. It's very popular right now to yank that contrast all the way to the right and make a very contrasty picture. If you like that, awesome. I like it uh, pulled back just a little bit. Uh, again, the highlights, you can kind of see um, those do very subtle changes there. I actually really like the presets that um, Lightroom chose for this image. So whites, if you pull the whites all the way to the right or the left, yeah. and then blacks. So pull blacks all the way in, put them out. So, so you can just add some uh, different presets like that. Okay, so that's just simple. Those are some just simple editing tips. Um, over or under exposing is probably the most common issue, and you can correct that uh, in in Lightroom. And also, just um, you know, some people are critical about don't process your images. I would say you should always process your image. You should always do some development. I mean, this is the stage where, you know, historically we would take the film into the dark room and then we would we would process our image in the dark room. And there were so many tips and tricks in uh, at that stage. This is the same exact thing. This is just your dark room. This is where you're developing your images. Okay. So um, you can also take spots out, like let's say this was a fuzz on this branch here. So I could, like this is a brush here where I could just remove this quickly. And then it tries to guess how it should remove it. And let's say I don't want another dot on it, I just want to get make it green. Okay, great. So I just removed that dot. So that looks pretty good, right? I'm going to undo that because... I don't want to accidentally <laughs> leave that in there. But so, so you can take little specks and stuff like that out as well. Okay, now let's quickly move to the image on white. We talk a lot about uh, the white box. So this is what the image looked like when it came out of the camera. Um, you can see it's a little bit darker on the right here. Um, it's maybe not cropped in quite as much as I'd want it cropped in. Uh, and so this image, um, we want it on a white background. So what you want to do is over here on the right, this box, if you click that box, when it has the white box around it, um, it will actually turn red. Anywhere on the image that's 100% white will turn red. And definitely don't have that yet. So one way to get that is this little tool here, this little um, brush, this adjust, adjustment brush. And all it is is I yank the exposure all the way to the right and the contrast all the way to the right. And now I can start painting, and you see how it started to turn red? That means anything that's red is completely white. Now this is a smart brush, so you can see, and it's quite huge right now. I can also, if I scroll down here, I can get to my brush size and make it quite a bit smaller. So if you notice, let me go a little bigger so you can see. So if you notice, it's sort of a bullseye. So that inner circle is what will be painted white, but then that outer circle, between the inner and outer circle, that's sort of a smart area. So it guesses where your the image is that you don't want um, turned white and um, where you do want white. So you can see, if I start getting up with that uh, brush, that outer rim gets to my bug, it's not going to make my bug white. But it does allow me to sort of like get in there 
and get in between the legs and stuff to make this completely white. And just like anything, if you do something that you don't want to do, then you can just hit Command Z and poof, it's undone. That's the other great thing about Lightroom is these are, it, the original image is not destroyed at all or changed or modified in any way. I can go back, in fact, I did go back. We had processed this image and I was like, well, I'll just reset this so I can process it uh, with you guys. So you can undo anything here. These are just sort of layers on top of the image that you export as them, a JPEG or whatever file format that you want to export it as. So um, we just clean this up and I will show you then how to export. Oops, see how I got that leg too much there and that's the head. So I'm going to go Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, back, there we go. So I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller so I can get in there. Another great tip is I'll zoom in. So command and the plus sign will zoom me in. You see all these little um, hairs on top of the beetle. I might even be tempted to remove some of these hairs. Control. Quickly do this. Get everything white that we want white. And then um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that if I grab a new brush here, and I'm just going to pull this to the middle. Um, maybe what I want to do is some of these highlights here. I want to tame them down a little bit. So like maybe this here. Maybe some of these and some of this. I'm just going to tame them down, so I'm going to make them a little bit darker by decreasing this exposure a little bit, and then I can just sort of quickly swipe over. Maybe that was that was maybe a little bit too much. I'm going to bring it back a little bit now. See when I bring this back, it's not quite as drastic. Just some quick swipes like that. Okay. So um, that's how you would edit. So this is. I, obviously, you can see where I didn't get everything true white, and you would want to do that. Um, let's just do it real quick because it's bothering me. So we added a new brush. It's going to get in here. I want to make sure I know what is pure white and what I have left to do. see how that looks. Okay, go to library. Yeah, so one more thing I want to show you how to do is you can crop. So basically you can just adjust your photo like this and crop it in a little bit so it fills your frame a little bit better. There's this tool here to the right, this box, and when I click it again and bam, it's caught my image. Excellent. So let's say um, I want to, I'm going to click library up here because that's how I can export. So you can just either click this export button down here and then just go through and say, okay, so it's going to have a certain file name. It'll be a JPEG. I can resize it to whatever size and resolution I want. Um, and I can either sharpen it for the screen or matte paper or glossy paper, whatever you want. And then you can just click export. Now there's all sorts of other things. I would say Lightroom is actually first and foremost a cataloging more than a processing and um, what you want to do to be able to find these images again and to be able to utilize them because I mean really you're taking them so you can use them in some way. Maybe somebody finds them, finds your image on Flickr or Facebook or some other um, uh, social media outlet or something and they want to purchase it for an article or something or ask if they can use it and can they have a higher resolution. You want to be able to easily find them. 
So what we do is um, two things. Uh, one is we will add, add keywords to it. So here's our keyword list. And this is something um, we've actually put a lot of work into. Uh, and you can purchase our keywords from us if you would like and import them into your Lightroom catalog. Um, but here we have organisms, which is our strength. This is what we uh, use. So these are all of our keyword lists. Uh, and under animals, uh, we want the invertebrates. Arthropods, hexapoda, the six-legged critters. I'm just scrolling down here, moving down all of these different keywords. Every time I click this, um, this image, I'll show you here in a minute. So, coleoptera, that's beetles, and so we these are just families and higher. So then we can go down to Lucanid and we have clicked Lucanid. Now this is hierarchical. So basically Lucanid and everything above it. So Lucanid will be a keyword, Polyphaga will be a keyword, Coleoptera, uh, and Pterygota will be all of these. All of these things that have a dash next to it will be a keyword. So if I search that, I will find it. But you say, this is a giant stag beetle. How, what if I wanted to look for a stag beetle? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because after that, what we do, I'm going to decrease this, is we use a large caption. So uh, what we'll do is we'll type in giant stag beetle in the large caption, the genus species, that it's a male, and this was actually a captive, captive reared individual. Okay, so then all of those words will also be searchable. So let me go back to our catalog, which has all of our uh, images in it. And if we click text up here, and make sure you're in the library up here, click text. And then if we search for giant stag beetle, we should find all images with giant stag beetles in it. It's taken a couple seconds. Bam, there they are. So notice there's a few other pictures in here, and that's because uh, some are part of their name actually has giant stag beetle in them. Uh, in fact, the common name of this guy here is also called, uh, this is an elephant stag or elk stag, is also called a giant stag beetle. But that is the power of Lightroom. You can quickly and easily find your photos if some, if a uh, uh, someone asks for it, a journal, magazine, wants to purchase one of your images, you can quickly and easily find it and send it to them. Okay, so that was a whirlwind tour of Lightroom. And there are um, many different ways that you can do the exact same thing that I did. And if you find a way that works best for you, that is great. That is the key. That is what you want to do is figure out what is the most time effective an easiest thing for you to do to process your images because um, my students were complaining about having a lot of images to process. They did a white box project and um, they had between 200 and 400 images and I told them that this is reality. Uh, in a single day we can produce that many uh, images and if we're traveling <sighs> can be thousands of images that we're producing a day. So this editing is actually Probably what takes, not probably, the editing is what takes the most time in nature photography. So uh, definitely the key is to do what's easiest and best for you. And this is just the tip of the iceberg with Lightroom. There are so many other things that it can do and uh, we can maybe do a video uh, about that in the future. So thanks for watching and if you could like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. It encourages us to make more videos. Have a good day, bye.